Hey, hey, uh, you are now drinking a glass of OJ. Uh, we're just going to have a little bit of a chat about something in security today. Um, and that is something I talked about on my personal Twitter, uh, 0DDJ0BB. And uh, now I'm putting on here. Uh, and essentially, this is uh, about facial recognition as an authentication method. Um, as we all know, authentication is the way in which we identify somebody um, and recognize somebody um, on a system to be able to then authorize them or be able to work with them in the system. It could be um, we need to prove who you are so that we can give you authorization to access this database, this particular table in the database, give you permissions to use it. So that way when you come back in, um, again, we can easily authenticate you and, oh yeah, you have access to this and you can go and get that. Um, so yeah, we have those. And, uh, so these nice password walls are put everywhere to say, we need to know who you're claiming to be, and we need to know something, uh, or receive something from you that, uh, tells us, yes, indeed, you are who you say you are, uh, or who you are claiming to be. Um, facial recognition, uh, essentially, um, is another username. And so many people are trying to, um, basically say, this is a password. So many facial recognition companies are starting to say, oh yeah, now you can just authenticate somebody just by their face. Um, I know that there was a problem that happened a couple of years ago with Apple, I believe it was, who they had a password, face password feature where essentially you look at the phone and it unlocks for you. Uh, because it knows who you are. Wow, that's a really great way of authenticating, right? Uh, and it, it's been covered many times, but there were several problems with that. Um, first and foremost um, is the legal problem of if for some reason you're pulled over or you're re-entering the country or some place where you're working with law enforcement in such a way that uh, for some reason they want access to your phone. Um, the Supreme Court has been fairly straightforward about this, that if the password or the way to authenticate your phone is something that in the course of police dealing with you, they get access to anyway, like your thumbprint or your face, then they can use that to basically get into your phone and search through it if they have a legal uh, reason to, or legal reason and legal power to actually do that. They still need a search warrant. Um, if they don't know your password, um, then it's up to the courts to compel you to open that up. And there's some, still some discussion on what, you know, how far that can go and in what situations someone may be compelled, um, against their fifth amendment to self-incriminate, to unlock a device that is suspected to belong to them. Uh, but anyway, so there's that problem um, of this face. Uh, you do not have consent, or rather people don't have your consent to know your password. Every time you show your face to somebody, in that case, you are giving them the means to authenticate um, to whatever system that you're using. Uh, so that is a bit of a problem. Uh, Fingerprints are bad enough because when you go to a bar, when you drink, when you handle something, you're leaving your password everywhere. You're putting you're putting your fingerprints everywhere, so you're potentially giving away your authenticators. Um, there's another problem, which is if you use facial recognition in conjunction with a username. So you type in a username, cool, let me see your face. That looks like you. Um, that now makes your username the most unique thing um, about you in that combination because your face, uh, as unique as it is, isn't necessarily always unique, um, or at least the way that the system gathers it and creates a data model or a data point about your face or collects data points about your face, that isn't necessarily unique uh, or not calculated or measured against in a unique way uh, or to create some unique value. So give you an example, again, with the iPhone, um, it was found that multiple uh, black people and other people of color um, were able to just 
pop their face, you know, onto the screen or into the camera. It went ahead and accepted them. Uh, they handed it over to another person of color, a black person or whatever. They put their face into the uh, into the box or whatever that was needed. It also unlocked because, hello, these people are Silicon Valley. They're mostly white males that are developing this technology. They weren't thinking, oh, yeah, there's going to be black people, Asian people, Latinos, uh, Latinx. There's going to be all kinds of people. There's going to be people with beards. There's going to be all kinds of people that are going to be using this software, that's going to be using this feature, and they all need to be able to use it in such a way that only their face is the one that is able to do that. The other problem is actually being too precise. Um, we see this with thumbprints, thumbprint scanners uh, at companies, uh, where you go, you scan your badge and then you put your thumbprint and i'm going to talk about that little combo in a bit but then you put your hand or your thumbprint on a scanner um you have to be very careful once again how you record that thumbprint usually there's you know a couple they have you when you create that data model or that data point for it to store they have you do it a couple times kind of like typing in your password a couple times to um uh, to store it. So what they're doing there is they're comparing just to make sure that yes, that looks like the same thumbprint. Problem is, is between winter and summer in many places, uh, or you get a scratch, you get something that now changes the way your thumb now looks. Um, or maybe you've gained weight, maybe you've lost weight. Uh, so now the data model looks different. So, um, someone can gain 50 pounds in a year, or they could also lose 50 pounds in a year, more likely gain, unfortunately, in this, in this, uh, in, in this health epidemic of obesity of which I am a hopefully shrinking part of, of trying to lose some weight. But, uh, that may be a problem at some point for me because maybe a data model that's been taken of me. Oh, wow. No, you, uh, your your thumbprint actually doesn't match anymore because uh, now you're thinner um, or because your finger has swollen up or because uh, you have a cut now there or something has changed. Your fingerprints don't stay the same throughout your lifetime. Um, so that's something. Faces the exact same way. You have beards. There's various things that can change about your face uh, depending on what data points they're gathering. Um, so they play with the sensitivities, right? So the sensitivity and the strictness of that data model. And so now your face can look like someone else's face. Um, it's possible. So these are collisions, if you will, uh, similar to a hashing algorithm and putting passwords through them, uh, two separate passwords that look different than each other, um, that are different than each other, uh, when put through the algorithm, come out with the exact same hash that's a that's a collision right uh hashing algorithms should good ones should never create collisions they are very rare uh and we've actually had to see uh um we've had to see certain sha and other um uh, hashing algorithms be abandoned uh, because those are no longer secure because somebody was able to finally find a value and another value for which the um, uh, or some data points that were calculated and then their value their hash uh, turned out to be uh, the same uh, so this is a problem and so they switched from that uh, you can't really do that with facial recognition I guess it depends on exactly how you're measuring those data points and ensuring that you always get some unique value um but again the problem exists that my face is everywhere um people are taking those data points away from me all the time you enter walmart uh they've taken that data point away from you they've taken a look at your face now those cameras aren't high res but yeah uh, i have Pictures of myself on uh, LinkedIn, on other places. Uh, that data point is taken away from me. There's this video. That data point, in this case, I've given it to you, but that data point is taken away from me. Uh, so I'm handing my password. It's worse than carrying around a password book because at least with the password book, you could make each password unique. 
so someone didn't just have to know or see your one password to know every password that is going to be used across all your accounts. Um, but not only that, uh, the password book, someone has to know I actually have the password book on me, has to steal that from me. My face, my face is not always with me. Uh, okay, that was a stupid statement. My face is always with me. And it's anywhere a video or photo has been taking of me, too. So, uh, and I've also seen facial recognition where I think Dave Kennedy and some other people did. They took photos of people and they've been able to show it to cameras um, that are processing facial recognition. And sure enough, howdy doody, it worked. Um, with 3D printing, you could there there are cameras in which you could take 3D models of someone's face, 3D print a sculpture of their face, and then take that uh, uh, take that shot, and you could get into their phone. You could get in someplace else. So it's a very bad um, model because um, of the pervasiveness of your face, especially given social media, Instagram, all these places. Um, not only this, but again, you know, our usernames, a lot of times are email addresses for a lot of personal accounts, um, something who you are or something of about you, like your face is not the best way to, um, authenticate as far as a password goes, a secret, something that should not be known to everybody. Now your face as a way to identify you, that might be okay. In fact, it's probably, hmm, it may be better than username. I'm not even quite sure. That may just become a double secret, but it, it can work as a way to say, aha, yes. It's not that you just, you know, know a username. You actually have to have, you know, something in a format in which I could gather data points about that, that match up with who I am. Um, so then you want some other type of password, right? So facial recognition, badge swipe. Facial recognition, um, I wouldn't do thumbprint. Uh, again, another combination there. A little stronger, but I wouldn't do that. Um, or facial recognition and, uh, and a pin uh, that, opens up to, uh, that opens up to the uh, second factor uh, token. Something that gets that in there for you um, so that it's a secret. It's something you only have. Or one-time passwords are great for this because... Those only exist for that brief moment of time and then they're gone and it's changed to something else and you have to be in on those cycles and know and be able to predict the next one for whenever I next try to sign in someplace. Um, so the problem is not of passwords is not a matter of how do I make sure only this person has the password. Um, it's also a problem of you know, when I worked at the call at a university, for instance, um, whenever somebody's um, .edu was exposed, uh, thanks Troy Hunt, because we used you a lot to uh, find some people sometimes. Um, whenever we would uh, find that .edu's were exposed on Pastebin or something like that, and we found the password, um, that's a problem. That's a, that's a problem. Uh, it would be a very big problem, at least it would seem to me, to have facial recognition for various applications out there. For instance, like your bank, Twitter, work, all these things. They all now share the exact same second, uh, second factor or first factor or something for a password. Uh, or just a replacement for a password. Now they all share the same factor that's a problem because if the data points or something was taken out of the system or once somebody has figured out how to break one of those systems they've broken them all um so that's that's just a problem that i'm seeing it's a problem that um that you want to get into and you want to think about if you're redesigning your corporate or you're thinking about doing facial recognition, think about that. But as a corporate, um, using face as a recognition, facial recognition for identification purposes should be fine. Um, but if you're going to start using it for the purposes 
of authentication, then you've got a problem because they can be reproduced. They're very easy to discover what someone's authentication um, data point is, namely their face. And it's very easy to reproduce that in such a way um, that they can that they can gather that. Now, there are some artificial intelligence companies coming out that are saying, well, not only this, but we gather so much data and it then compares that against all the other faces it has to figure out why your face is different than everyone else's. Again, it kind of comes back to though, if your face changes such that it no longer recognizes you, it says, hey, yeah, you, you actually look different than the photo I have for you. So I don't, I don't really think you are. So now we're talking about tolerance measures here. It doesn't always work. Um, so just like with the thumbprint, you have to lower that sensitivity down to where most people are going to get in if as long as the thumbprints work don't lower it too far or else two people could be scanning in and all of a sudden now you see joe coming in and then you know sally or something comes in later and oh wow they had the same thumbprint why why did he enter from the same gate twice you know what how did they not badge out you know how how did they do that um, it's rare, but it can happen if someone has set that way too low. So that's why you have a badge, badge scan, thumbprint, enter. So badge scan, face, enter. That seems a lot better. That seems a lot better to me. That way you're identifying a person and you're doing that. Um, you could, you could do a face password. Fine, fine. Because it's even harder for someone to break, right? Because now when they try to break into the system, they also have to have a face picture of you uh, such that the, the system, whatever's being used, is going to be able to use that. So you're going to have to store a lot of data, um, which may or may not be consequential these days. You're going to have to store a lot of data in order to break a lot of accounts. But if you're going after one person, you still get the problem of you need that password. And if people are paying good enough attention and making sure all their passwords are unique, maybe they're using KeyPass or LastPass or whatever have you, it should be a little better. Because username is definitely something you know. It's, a, it's an identifier. But having that factor of, oh yeah, here's my, here's my face and here's a password, that does make it harder. That does make it harder. But again, uh, it's the same everywhere you go. So it's, in a way, it's similar to using your email address for all your accounts out there on the internet. Uh, and sometimes a lot of companies require you. It must be a .com, .edu. It must be an email address format. But uh, those are my thoughts on it. Uh, it's certainly not definitive, certainly not the expert opinion, but it's a little bit of a rant, a little bit of thought process on this. If you have anything else you've thought about, uh, on this if there's a correction you want to give me uh, and point me to some great research or point me to some wonderful marvels that's in uh, face, facial recognition technology let me know hit me up on social media uh, comment on this video and uh, that I think the the glass of OJ is about empty so uh, we'll see you next glass